Yes, it's happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, good af good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, thank you for joining this presentation to review Caledonia's results for the second quarter of 2024. I'm Mark Learmonth, Caledonia's Chief Executive. I'm joined by Chester Goodburn, uh, our CFO, and also Victor Gapari, who is another Executive Director. James should should have joined us, but he's, he's travelling somewhere in Zimbabwe, and I suspect he's got um, I, su I suspect he's got communication difficulties. Okay, should we? We've got a relatively short presentation to run through. So Chester's driving it. Chester, could you um, could you move through the right? So overview. It was an excellent quarter. Um, production up, the gold price up, uh, costs down, and that all flowed through, as you'll see, into a very strong financial very strong financial performance. In terms of production, we produced uh, just under 21,000 ounces of gold in the quarter, uh, comfortably up from the 17,500 that we achieved in the second quarter of 2023. So a very substantial improvement there. Also during the quarter, although not a, not a focus for this presentation because we've already discussed it at some length, we published a preliminary economic assessment of the Bilbo's sulphide project, which reiterated um, the fact that it's a, a, got a very strong underlying economics. Uh, it'll produce one and a half million ounces over a 10-year mine life, all in sustaining cost of um, below $1,000 an ounce, so highly cash generative. In addition, we also published a, uh, a revised uh, mineral and resource estimate for um, for Blanket Mine, which effectively doubled our resource base, our reserves by, um, it doubled our reserves, and means that now we have a, um, a a life of mine based on reserves of Blanket out beyond 10 years, which is um, a very healthy position for a, a mine of our nature. Based on our internal life of mine plan, which includes some inferred resource as well, we've got a life of mine plan now out to um, 2041 which you know, significantly underpins the business going forwards. It's also worth noting that the increase in, um, in gold ounces was a result of not just more tons, but also higher grade, which is, um, which is very healthy. And just as a matter of administration, some of you may have, if you've seen it in the, um, in the MDNA and the, the, the news release that we published this morning, for administrative purposes, we're rescheduling the declaration and hence the payment of our quarterly dividends to bring it in line with the um, the quarterly board processes to approve and um, review the the quarterly financials it's just purely administration there's nothing else nothing else to it apart from that okay so just turning to the results summary um, stable in terms of safety clearly there's always more that we can do and this continues to be an area of management focus um, but it's, it's pretty much the same as it has been in previous quarters as I mentioned, production up um, quite significantly. Clearly, as we all know, the, the gold price is higher. So we realized um, exactly $2,300 an ounce, um, substantially higher than the $1,949 in the comparative quarter. All of that flowed through to a significant increase in revenue, uh, just over $50 million for the quarter. And as you'll see in a moment, lower online costs means that uh, gross profit more than doubled, up from approximately $11 million to nearly $23 million in the quarter. And that flowed through to a significant increase in net profit attributable to shareholders, which was eight, nearly $8.4 million for the quarter compared to a loss of half a million do, do, um, half a million dollars in the corresponding quarter. And obviously that then flows through to an increase in earnings per share. I think we'll move forwards now and um, I'll ask, Ch oh, sorry, Craig, uh, sorry, um, James was going to join us. Unfortunately, he has um, a communications issue. This is a slide that we've used um, many times. It just shows the long term development in terms of um, tons milled, uh, grade, ounces produced and recovery. And during the quarter, pretty much everything went as or slightly better than planned in terms of better tons better grade and the recovery remains um, very efficient at, uh, at the sort of 93 93 and a half percent and that then flows through into into better ounces so frankly there's, there's no there's nothing funny to nothing funny to explain here it was a um, it was a good solid quarter and um, you know hopefully we can see a repetition of that in uh, in future quarters 
Should we move on? Okay, I'll ask Chester to run through some of the financials in a bit more detail, Chester, if you could do that for us, please. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, uh, very, very good quarter, and I'm pleased to to share these results with our shareholders. Uh, revenues were up 35.4%. Um, that's on account of additional ounces, as well as um, high gold prices that we've received. Royalties are up. Um, that's due to the higher revenues. Royalties that remain flat at 5% of revenues. Um, production costs, <clears throat> in absolute terms, that is down. Uh, on a consolidated basis, and an online cost at blanket it's reduced to nine hundred and six dollars from nine hundred and fifteen dollars per ounce in the previous quarter. Depreciation has increased due to higher fixed asset cost base, and it was good to see our gross profits increasing by one hundred and ten percent. That's twelve million dollars up from the comparable quarter. Other costs are, are down uh, by 1.6 million due to lower foreign exchange losses. It was good to see that the volatile RTGS was replaced on 5 April of this year by the, the ZIG that has so far been more stable. And should that continue, we should also see lower foreign exchange losses. Our net finance costs is lower. That's due to additional cash in the group that reduced the, the interest charge. And our tax expense has normalized to in between 30 to 33 percent of the of our effective tax rate. That's due to higher profits and a less proportion of non-deductible expenditures. It was also good to see our EPS up to, to 43 cents and adjust the EPS of 51 cents for the quarter. That's all produced in, in the three month space. Looking at our production cost per ounce. Uh, that's come down significantly on an online cost basis due to the Bilbo's oxides cost that has come down. That's reduced our online cost by 13.7%. Power and labor is up. Power mostly due to consumption and higher maximum demand charges. We're seeing higher ma maximum demand charges due to uh, succeeding some of our, our limits on the electricity use in certain times of the day. And we are working on that. We, we've got some power factor correction equipment that's in the budget that should help with that. And we're also looking to create some efficiencies, efficiencies when it comes to, to labor overtime and the power consumption. I was quite pleased to see the consumables coming down by, by 3%. This is a time where you see your consumables increasing and you see a lot of inflationary pressures across the globe. But at Blanket, we've we've managed to curb that and actually reduced our consumable costs due to good procurement practices. On a all in sustaining costs, that's come down mostly due to the online costs coming down. And what you'll see in that that other costs would be the royalties, and that's due to to higher revenues that we've um, that we've generated over the quarter. We maintain production guidance at eight hundred and seventy dollars pounds to nine hundred and seventy dollars. Pounds uh, for online costs, and we also maintain our all in sustaining cost guidance between $13.70 and $14.70 per ounce. So it's good to see our costs being in check while we are producing more ounces and also at these record gold prices. Administrative expenses are approximately $3 million down. That's due to uh, $3 million of expenditures that we expended last year to complete the finalization and acquisition of the, the Bilbo's uh, sulfide steel. Um, that added $3 million, uh, 3 million ounces of, of um, resource and reserves to our group. And it was good to see us going en route to becoming a multi-asset gold producer. Employee cost has also increased. And that is, um, that's by about $500,000 that previously was accounted for as Oxide's operating expenditures. We've moved those employees and those resources over to the feasibility study. And we've also um, reallocated some of those, those resources to the Matapa drilling. So good to see uh, spending some costs on furthering our business and our strategy of becoming a multi-asset gold producer. Now, with the re revenues being up, costs being down, and um, in check, it's good to see our cash generation increasing. We've generated just over $20 million in the quarter, 
And that's more than, than we've generated any quarter over the last two years. So really good cash generation. And overall on a net basis, we've added $12.8 million worth of cash during the last three months. So I'm really pleased with these, these results and the cash generation that, that, came, that comes with that. Over to you, Mark. Okay, well, look, I mean, <clears throat> this, this presentation focuses on on the financial results for the quarter, we've we've discussed in separate calls the um, the work of the, of the PEA at Bilbo's and also the um, the um, uh, upgrade in the in the reserves and resources. So really, this 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 the, these results are very clean, very good, quite easy to talk to. In terms of our immediate strategic focus, we are uh, continuing to run blanket to achieve our targeted production range of between 74,000 and 78,000 ounces for the for the year and then thereafter similar levels from 2025 onwards also making good progress on completing the feasibility study in respect of the um, the sulfide project and in parallel with that we're um, refining our our own internal uh, work that we've done on funding structures for that, um, for, for that, um, for that asset. Uh, in, initially, we're focusing on um, refining our understanding of the the debt capacity of the project. But given the fact that it is it is so high margin and has such a quick payback, we are confident that a high proportion of the overall funding requirement will be capable of being funded by debt. And then, in parallel, we're also uh, com com continuing with our initial exploration at Matapa. That uh, that exploration work started um, in the second quarter, uh, right at the beginning of the second quarter, will be finished towards the end of the third quarter, and then subject to the capacity of the assay labs, we'd expect to um, get those results out uh, before the end of the year. It is fair to say that the work to, to prove uh, the topper is you know, about five years behind Bilbo's in terms of, um, of exploration, and so it will take a considerable, considerable period of time to do sufficient exploration at um, at Matapa to uh, prove up a um, a significant resource, but um, so far it's all looking very good. So with that, it's a really it's a brief presentation, but I think it's on point. We'll open it up to um, to questions. Typically, we prefer questions um, you know spoken. Um, if they're typed, the risk with a typed question is that you know we don't really understand the nuance, and, and we may answer a slightly different question from that which you you actually wanted answering so please if you are able if you could um uh, just just open the line and um ask questions verbally okay i'm gonna start on un unmuting people i do see one i do see one typed q a let me um let me let me just go to that one that's here you're you're unmuted all right thank you can you hear me yes. uh, yeah Okay. Um, I've been noticing over the past few months that there's been a, an increase in, in um, I think, the U.S. asset manager BlackRock's uh, shareholding in the company. And I wanted to find out um, if the your company is going to um, uh, continue with selling a, you know, a significant stake of the company to BlackRock and what their increased stake in Caledonia will mean in the long term. Thank okay. you. Okay. Just to clarify something about that, we're not a BlackRock BlackRock's participation in Caledonia is as a as a manager of a a passive a passive fund. So it's an index, it's an index tracker investor. So we're in the something called the Russell 3000 index in the United States. And that means BlackRock run a fund which which um tracks that index okay and so to make sure that the the fund mirrors the performance of the index they have to buy shares in the underlying companies and because there actually aren't that very many gold companies if any other than us in the russell 3000 blackrock have to buy and sell our shares from time to time depending on whether what our weighting is within the overall index so that's the first thing they're not active managers they're purely passive managers and typically you'll see that as our market capitalization goes up, they'll have to buy more shares to, to increase the weighting of Caledonia in the, in the, in the overall portfolio. Conversely, when our, when our market cap falls, they'll typically sell shares. 
They're only buying and selling shares in the market. There is no, they're not having issue, shares issued to them. So I hope that answers the question. Well, uh, does that answer the yes. question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. So I can, I, before we move on, I can see a, a, a typed question. Um, modest increase in plan capex spend for 24. What led to the $700,000 million upward vision in plan capex for the tailing facility phase 1B against the expected $4.7 million in Q1 2024. Chester, are you able to... Um, yes, uh, but quite, a detail, uh, quite a detailed question. Are you able to answer that? I hope so. Yes, yes I am. It's a compressor that, we, that we're planning to, to implement a blanket just to, to improve the pneumatics underground. Okay. Um, now, the, the second part of this question relates to water at blanket. For those people who aren't in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is, is, is suffering from a very poor, very bad drought. Situa situation. The rainy season normally is sort of November to February, um, and last the last rainy season was extremely poor, and so there is a, a big shortage of water. And the question relates to um, what the what the impact of that um, of that water shortage has been on um, on blanket. One of the I'm happy to say that one of the unexpected but very welcome. Um, side effects of the new tailings facility is that because it's a, a lined tailings facility, it means that the water that goes into the tailings facility doesn't escape underground, which means that we can now recycle much more water from the tailings facility than we could from the old one, which was unlined, and therefore the, the water used to percolate percolate into the ground. That's the first thing to say. Second, second thing is that we we are we are and we have taken measures to uh, reduce our water consumption, but for the time being, water has been has been released into the blanket dam from upstream, and at the moment we're not seeing and we don't expect to see over the course of the next before we get to the next rainy season any any adverse consequences. Clearly, clearly, if the upcoming rainy season is as disappointing as the last rainy season, that, that may cause difficulties. Uh, we do have boreholes, uh, which we've, um, um, what's the right word, sort of not renovated, but um, you know, we've got them, got them going again and we, we, we could look for other boreholes, but it is a risk and it is one that we recognize. One further question, how's the production grade profile playing out at Blanket? Um, the, Grade profile is lower than it has been in previous years. The grade of blanket is lower than it has been in previous years, um, but is is improving. I don't I don't see blanket as getting significantly above eighty thousand ounces a year. I'm, I'm comfortable giving guidance for blanket in the range of seventy five to eighty. The the range the the grade will will improve as we as we move forwards, um, but I think for, to it I can't really give guidance that blanket will be you know producing substantially above 80,000 ounces a year. Any, I can see, a, uh, sorry, there's someone got a hand up, um, Camilla? There are, there are a few people with their hands up. Um, so yeah. um, Ian, Jocelyn, you're unmuted. About uh, foreign exchange, which you briefly mentioned, and the role it plays in adjusted EPS. Uh, obviously, adjusted EPS is something that says this is our these are the earnings you would normally expect and uh, the difference between the adjusted earnings and the IS, IAS earnings are one-off um, uh, pluses or minuses that won't reoccur. But a comment you made as part of your presentation implied that because of the volatility of the currency, you tend to systematically lose money on FX. And I just wondered how you can relate that to basically stripping it out when you put your Okay, so that's a that's a very fair question. Um, historically, we have actually incurred. Let, let's be let's be clear. The the Zimbabwe currency, formerly the RTGS, now the ZIG, has been very volatile. Historically, we have actually incurred very substantial foreign exchange gains. Um, there was one year, the one quarter, I think, Chester, we did was it was it like tens of millions of dollars yeah. when the deferred tax liability um, devalued, and so as the as the tax as the Dollar tax liability in dollar terms became much smaller. We had a, we had a gain, um, and so initially we started. We, we thought that was whilst it would have been great fun to um, keep that in the 
in the adjusted EPS calculation, it was kind of misleading. So initially we went into um, adjusted EPS to try and remove things like that, which were outside management's control. You're correct that in the last two quarters, particularly the first quarter of this year, and to the lesser extent, the second quarter of this year, we have reversed out substantial foreign exchange losses. So in the first quarter, the foreign exchange loss was $4 million. In this quarter, the foreign exchange loss was $2 million. And let's, and let's be clear, that $2 million loss in, in, in the second quarter was incurred in the first five trading days of the year because the RTGS was... Um, was discontinued on the 5th of April. So that $2 million was incurred at the, um, in the first um, five days of the year. Since then, uh, with, the re with the introduction of the, of the ZIG, the official exchange rate has been very stable. And uh, if it continues on this basis, the, the incidence of, of foreign exchange gains and losses will, will become, well, if I say immaterial, I, mean, I don't mean like an accounting way, it will, become, it will become not such a, it will become a much, much less noticeable factor. OK, but it is it is clearly disclosed every quarter and there is a full reconciliation in, I think, note 10.2. Is that correct, Chester? 10.2? 10, yeah, 10, you know. Yeah, in the in the end, you know, you'll see a full reconciliation between uh, IFRS um, EPS and the adjusted EPS. So I hope that does that answer your question adequately. I was just, I was just, I mean, it, it sounds. I mean, it, clearly you've got different elements on your balance sheet. They will be affected in different ways, as you pointed out, with your deferred tax. Um, I guess it's it's all about whether the government in Zimbabwe intends to try to run um, a firm money policy, or, or whether it, it will go back to what it historically has done is obviously devalue the currency. Um, it, I, and this is just an opinion I'm asking of you. Do you think the government in Zimbabwe is is less likely to devalue the currency to nothing as it has done in the past? Is it is it has it turned over a new leaf with the zig? Or... No, let me let, let me answer that. I mean the the elements of the um, of the balance sheet that crystal that give rise to foreign exchange losses are the RTGS receivables, which is which is the relatively small proportion of our revenues which we sell in local currency and where we receive the cash sort of a week or so after the date of the transaction. And then the other the other component is the refund of um, VAT. So it's both of those two things that drive um, foreign exchange losses. All, all I can repeat to you is the conversations I had with the Deputy Minister of Finance, with the incoming governor of the Reserve Bank, the governor of the Reserve Bank changed uh, at the end of March, and with the permanent representative of the IMF in Harare, um, all of all three of whom were very confident that, you know, the Zimbabwean having having broken the RTGS, there is a, a clear a clear uh, determination not to make the same mistake with the new currency. That that's all I, all I can repeat. Um, you know, I, can't, I can't give a view as to whether they're going to stand behind that or not. No, no, I understand. But, um, I understand. Just, just, just a view of what you've been. But there about does a, don't, don't forget, nobody. The, the the collapsing of the of the currency doesn't doesn't help anybody. Doesn't help us, and it, it, the government it, government ends up chasing its tail as well. So um, it's in everybody's interests to maintain a stable currency, and the government and the various. And the, the governor of the Reserve Bank seem absolutely determined to um, to maintain that. That's all I can say. And do you think the timing of those VAT refunds was timed to coincide with the collapse of the currency? Um, I don't think so. No, um, no, we've not seen any blowout. We haven't seen any sort of untoward lengthening of of credit. No, 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 we haven't seen that. You don't see it in the timing either. Um, our, our timing of our VAT receivables are between 60 and 120 days, and they vary uh, during those days uh, you know, throughout, and it's been doing so for the last couple of years. So it's been very constant in terms of how regularly we receive those VAT refunds. Okay. The, 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 bigger, the bigger one, the one that's got more volume, would be the, um, the payment of the RTGS component of our of our revenues, and that's a much short. I would hate people to think there's 120 days for that, Chester. That's much shorter, isn't it? Yeah, for the bullion receivable, it offers between 14 to seven days that we receive it from delivery at Fidelity, and that's just for the 25% portion of our our gold sales. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. And in that portion, you have to sell. That's a standard requirement for you to do, is it? Yeah, we we have to sell twenty five percent to to government. Uh, the balance, the seventy five percent of the remainder, we export ourselves and we we sell that offshore for dollars. Got you. Okay, that's been very helpful. That, that that actually is a relatively recent development. The ability to export our gold is only something we started doing in April, twenty twenty three. So we've been doing that for just over a year now, and that work that works extremely well. We um we'll deliver a bar of gold. Uh, or several bars of gold into uh, into Dubai on a day, say a Monday morning, and we get sort of ninety ninety five percent of the revenues that day, and the balance two two days later. It works very nicely. Thank you. That's good. That's been very very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see a, a question from Tatira. Hand up. There's Nick Dillon. I'm just unmuting Nick. Hi, Mark. Hi, Nick. Um, okay, just so there was a follow-up question to the to the to that earlier question by Ian. Um, it's not really a, a question, but it's an observation that um, obviously your suppliers are skeptical are skeptical about the future of the Zig, and uh, I see that that black market Zigs are now trading between twenty and twenty-two. Does this is this an early indicator of a uh, a robust parallel market starting to develop. Um, Victor, do you want to talk about that? I mean, I would say that of, of clearly our visibility of, of an illegal foreign exchange market, Nick, is by definition zero. I would just say that. Uh, but Nick, um, sorry, Victor, are you able to help um, help with Nick's question? Yeah, thank you, Mark. Nick, I mean, basically, let's just focus on what we as Caledonia do. Number one, we get uh, the zig from the Zimbabwe government for 25% of our gold production or our sales. So basically what we do with that ZIG is we match the bulk of it with the payments we have to make to government because government has set in place uh, payments to it which are paid in ZIG. So basically the, that you are matching in terms of the exchange rate. The balance, which is a very small amount, we actually buy local products. So in terms of having visibility, what's happening on the parallel market, we don't really feel it that much we don't we don't see it that much at this stage other than uh maybe when we talk about the exchange losses when the zig officially devalues or something like that so i would say we don't have visibility on that we couldn't comment on that but Nick, uh, sorry uh, victor could you um just just talk about the the measures the government took to to put um liquidity into the into the market recently yeah okay uh when there was a bit of pressure on the market about, uh, I think it's about two or so weeks ago, we actually did see the government releasing about 50 million US dollars into the market, right? Because what they've basically said is the ZIG is backed by gold and some uh, foreign currency. So all they did is they converted the gold which they are keeping, which is the gold and currency which they have. The gold, they get it out of 50% of the royalties we pay. We pay in uh, in uh, in physical gold, and also the other producers give them money so they can have reserves. So what they're doing is they're trying to manage it in the sense that if they think the ZIG is uh, on the market is under pressure, they're actually releasing money uh, through the reserve bank onto the market. So you see the currency, the rate coming down actually. So I mean, Nick, I'm I'm not a I'm not an economist by any means, but if you if you have a currency which is backed by something gold or us dollars you should in theory when people want to sell your currency you should in theory be able to take that those zigs off those people who want to get rid of those zigs and give them the the, the asset backing give them whatever it is uh, the gold or the the dollars behind it until you get to such a point that the the money the supply of the zig is so restricted that the zig exchange rate has to strengthen again that's the theory now I don't, I don't, I'm not an economist and I'm certainly not a central banker. So you kind of exhausted my understanding of how, how currencies work. But, um, I think what we saw in the, in the last couple of weeks where, um, in recognition of the, of the movement in the parallel market, government did release dollars. I think it kind of suggests that, um, 
they they really are running this currency as a as an asset backed currency. Okay, excellent. Uh, one or two uh, other little questions, if I may. So um, you had a rock fall in Eroica. Is there a read through into a broader picture uh, of what's happening on the mine, or is this an isolated incident? No, uh, nice. It's an isolated incident. It, it did it did have an adverse effect on production in July, as you'll have seen from the MDNA. Production in July was about six thousand ounces, um, and if we've now got all the crews back to other areas and they're, they're now working in productive phases. Um, and, and the, the area that has, has been affected by the fall of ground will, will be recovered. Um, so it's, it's, it's not symptomatic or systemic of any broader problem with the, um, of any broader problem, Nick. Okay. And then the last question is that you've obviously got quite a bit of CapEx lined up for H2. That's still going to amount to 31, $32 million by year in. Yep. Okay, excellent. Right. Thank you. Yep. I mean, so to be clear, what we did is we, um, having seen you know, disappointing production towards the end of last year and a slow start to the beginning of this year, the first six weeks of this year, we put the brakes on CapEx uh, because, you know, we can't, we've, we've seen this movie before where production promises an increase that will get back on track in terms of production and in the meantime could we could we please carry on spending on the on the, on the capex plans um and having been bitten by that before this year we we said well hold on the production is not there the cash isn't flowing as it should be therefore we will defer capex now as as clearly our cash generation has improved that planned capex will be released um in the second half of the year sorry one more question mark um there's a commentary about additional um, studies to enhance this solar power panel project, uh, the capacity there, at the same time you're talking of selling. Is this mm -hmm. an adjunct to, or will the study disappear once you've sold? No, it's part and parcel of the, part and parcel of the same thing. So the, um, idea is, the idea is that we will sell, well, not the idea, it's, it's more than an idea, it's, 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 it's happening, is that we will sell the, the solar plant uh, in terms, in, in res, and we'll have a, a, a long-term power purchase agreement on the same terms as we currently enjoy and in addition the new owner will will construct a second phase okay excellent See, the, the point is we're selling we're selling it to someone whose core business is building and developing and running solar plants it's not our core business we don't need to own this right excellent thanks very much Mark. okay um there is another question from Albright. Is there another question? Yes, there is. All, Albright, I'm just trying to unmute. Albright, you're, you're unmuted. Sorry. Is someone asking me a question because I can't understand or hear properly? I think it might be Dr. Kishore. I think it might be Dr. Kishore. I think it might be Dr. Kishore. Sorry, I, I, really can't, I really can't understand. I think it might be the production yeah. Sorry, Victor, can you can you help on this? Because I really can't understand, hear this properly. He Albright is now muted. I, I, I think okay, yeah. I actually right. think they're having a background conversation among themselves. Yeah, okay. Well when they've decided when they've stopped the background conversation and they decided the question, we'll try and deal with it. But um yeah. I couldn't hear that properly. Any further um any further questions coming? I can see some there are some see... written questions. There, there are a few written questions. Okay, hold on. Uh let me see. So we've got a question here from Howard. Um, just... No, just a minute, I'm working through them. I'm just working There's through them. Justin Bearing, it's, that's the next one. Can you comment on the proposed changes, the FX regime and how like, I think I think I've dealt with that. Um the the expectation is that for, for Bilbo's, Bilbo's will operate on 100% US dollar basis anyway. Um, so I think, I, think, I think we've dealt with that. I hope, I hope Justin, we, we've dealt with that question. Um, I think we've dealt with um, another question about the July production issue. 
Um, again, I think I think we dealt with that. It was a fall of ground affected Eroica, which is a, um, a high grade area of the mine. It, it affected us in July. It's been it's been sorted out, and the the mine in the last week has been running within one percent or so of um, of, um, of of plan. So it doesn't. It's, it's not a long term impact. Um, how a, a question on inflation? I, I don't know what the monthly inflation rate has been recently. Victor, do you know what the monthly inflation rate is? Yeah, actually, in the last few months, uh, when the Reserve Bank has released something, or rather the Zimbabwe Statistical Office has, removed, has released something, it was actually very minute because the ZIG has been very stable in the last few months since they introduced it. So I think it was almost like 2% or something like that. Or well, 2% a month? Small. 2% a month? No, much less than that, Mark. Okay, okay. Annualized, yeah. Okay. Uh, annu- annualized, annualized. Okay. Yeah. Beach, that's better. That's better than a lot of other places. Um, yeah. Any any further questions? Camilla, can you see anything? No, I don't think there are any more. Okay. Well, look, um, that's relatively brief, but I think the numbers the numbers speak for themselves. So thank you for your um, attendance, and we'll do the same thing again in uh, mid-November after we've released the um, third quarter results. So thank you all very much for your uh, your participation.